Welcome to another episode of 256 Seconds with .NET Dave. I'm David McCarter, and I'm glad you're back. It's uh, I'm re actually recording this on Labor Day weekend here in the United States, and it's getting, it's going to be warm here in San Diego. Even though we've had a cool summer, it's going to be warm this uh, today. So I'm trying to record this before it gets too warm because I have to shut off all the fans and everything in my house. So anyway, so in this episode, we're going to talk about my latest article called Improve Your Model Classes with OOP Part 3 and Serialization. So even though serialization isn't really part of OOP, to me, it makes better model classes because uh, you're making it easier for the developers who are using your model classes to serialize the data. You know, in this modern day uh, of programming, uh, most data gets serialized somehow, whether it's going through an API or other mechanisms being stored to disk or even being stored to Cosmos DB, which their underlying data structure is just JSON, which is going to be the first serialization we talk about. So we're going to build upon the class that I did in Article 2 and add the things we need for serialization. And I'm going to go over those steps for you and for both JSON and XML. So first, uh, let's talk about serialization of the person object to JSON, since JSON is probably the most widely used uh, format these days. So if we take the model class that we did in Article 2, this is the model class for Article 2, and we just serialize it to JSON using the Newtonsoft uh, JSON serializer, this is what it looks like. So here's our JSON data. Uh, full of test uh, strings and dates. And this is what it looks like uh, using the person class from Article 2. And um, it actually looks okay, except if you know me or have read any of my articles, I'm very big into coding standards. This JSON doesn't really follow uh, the JSON uh, naming standards for a property. So to play well with other types of uh, uh, a naming standards, uh, we need to fix this. Because in our world, the object-oriented world in .NET, um, you know, all of our properties start with an uppercase character. Uh, in the JSON world, uh, all of the properties start with a lowercase uh, character. By default, this is what comes out of our model class. But like I said, I want to play well with the, the uh, JSON uh, naming standards. So how do we accomplish this? So the first thing we need to add is the data contract attribute to the class. And there's a couple things we can do with this data contract attribute. I'm not doing most of them. I'm just setting the name of the uh, actual person uh, to a lowercase person, which is proper for JSON. So that's the data contract class for, for the class definition itself. The real work comes down with the properties. Here you can see in address one, I'm adding the data member attribute to address one, and I'm giving it the name of lowercase address one. And um, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can look at address two is the same. There are a few more things we can do with the data member that I'm going to show you. Here you can see uh, in data member for email, since email is required, I'm setting the, attrib uh, the attribute property here is required to true. And I do the same thing for uh, ID down here. As you can see, all the properties uh, properly uh, start with a lowercase character as opposed to an uppercase character. One of the main reasons I really want to bring this up is because, you know, this is the way that we can live in our world with, you know, the property names that we like and the people in JSON or other worlds can use the property names they like, and we can all get along together by using attributes. Using attributes like this, you can name your properties anything you want. So in the article, I'm showing this example from Salesforce, actually. The Salesforce, at least to my mind, uses the worst property names I've ever seen. So here's an example of they have a uh, property in there. They're actually, this is from XML serialization, a property called total underscore units underscore sold 
underscore underscore C. I don't even know what that means. In our world, we don't use underscores like this in our properties. Uh, so as you can see in the article here, I just I used their property name up here for the serialization, uh, but then I named it whatever I want. So uh, for this example, at least, I just named it unit sold. Not sure exactly what this attribute means, uh, but you can name it whatever you want. And that's the point I'm trying to bring home here uh, with using attributes, because that's one of the things I hear a lot when I review code. They say, they say well, this is the property name in the uh, uh, WSDL. And I say, fine, you can change it. So change it. Uh, the developers using your type uh, will really thank you because it's going to be a lot more understandable doing this. I forgot to show you the code that does the actual JSON serialization. So using the Newtonsoft uh, NuGet package, it's pretty much this one line of code. I am setting up some settings right here where I'm setting the indenting. But really, it's just one line of code. Serialize object, you give it the collection settings if you want to, and uh, put that into a string. Boom, you're done. And deserialization uh, is just as easy. One line of code to deserialize JSON back into a uh, people collection. So now uh, let's move on to talking about XML serialization. The reason I'm talking about XML serialization is because there are still many, many, many companies and many, 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 many apps that still use XML and probably will for a long time. So uh, to make the people using your assembly happy, uh, why not just build in, build in the serialization to XML before you release it? So XML has been a widely used serialization format for a really long time. I'm not really sure when it came out, but I've been using it since uh, the late 90s, I think, um, easily late 90s, and I still use it. But I don't usually write any new code using XML if I can uh, get away from it. I use JSON because it's a more compact uh, uh, format. So I want to show you really quick on how I do the serialization and deserialization. This code here, the serial, this serialize uh, code here is actually from my open source project, which you can get on a GitHub and you can get the uh, NuGet package too. And uh, here where, here's where I'm serializing uh, uh, the object to XML. Uh, this code has been around in .NET for forever and uh, pretty much tried and true it works great. So there's the code to deserialize um, the XML back into a uh, person uh, collection. Now, if we take uh, the code we wrote uh, for JSON and run it through the XML serializer, it actually works, but there's a big problem here. You can see here on the born on uh, property, there's no value. And why is that? Well, I, I decided to make born on a uh, date time offset um, variable type. And uh, the reason that I use date time offset uh, always now, and it's actually a recommendation by Microsoft, is because daytime offset can also hold the uh, data for time zone. So how can we fix this? There's um, a couple things we need to do to play uh, better in the XML world, and then I'm going to show you the code on how we can fix this problem. So first, we need to add a couple attributes to the top of our class. The first one is a serializable attribute, and the second one, XML root. And in here, I'm naming uh, the XML root person, uh, which is basically the same thing as the data contract uh, name up here. One thing, though, is as soon as you add uh, these attributes, the XML serializer is going to try to serialize your private variables. And uh, that's not what we want. You know, what we want serialized are the properties themselves, mainly because we want the data validation to, to work through the properties as the data is being set uh, with serialization. For every single backing field, I need to add the non-serialized uh, uh, attribute to those. And then uh, for most of our properties, all we really need to do is add XML element. And that will serialize the property um, as, part as, as part of the XML. And like with data members, uh, XML element, uh, you can also set uh, is nullable to false to make sure that these uh, values are always set. And that's basically most of what we need to do to this class uh, to make it play well in the XML world. 
How do we fix the born on date? You can see here uh, the born on date is a date time offset, like I said before. There's a couple ways we can fix this. I chose the easiest way to do it, and that's uh, by doing a couple things. So I added the XML ignore attribute to born on because I don't want that serialized because as you can see, uh, the serializer doesn't understand date time offset, and so it just puts in a blank value. So we want to hide this property from XML serialization, and this is how we do it. Now we need to create a new property, and I chose the name of born on for XML. And I've done a couple things to this. Uh, let's talk about the code itself. So you can see here in the code, I'm actually using uh, the born on property as the underlying uh, how we get and set the data. Now, the first attribute I added was editor browsable uh, and setting the state to never because I really don't want developers using this property. I guess they can, uh, but I really don't want them to. It should be part of their programming practice. And I want to hide this property from JSON serialization because the, the born on date works fine with JSON. So I add the ignore data member attribute. And then finally, to make sure that the XML looks the same as the JSON, pretty much. I add, I use XML element, but here I'm choosing it to be named born on, not born on for XML. That way, uh, when we look at the XML, the properties are the same except for the naming standards. Now, if we serialize this, this is what it looks like now. And you can see here, here's born on. And it's represented properly. It has the uh, um, time zone information in it. And this goes in and out of the, the XML serializer perfectly. Works fine. So that's pretty much it for this uh, article. I hope you check it out. I'm going to be writing more articles on proper object-oriented techniques in .NET. So stay tuned uh, to this website uh, to uh, see when those come out. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, I hope to see you on the next episode of 256 Seconds with .NET Daily. See ya.